Uh, good morning. Uh, this is uh, the uh, laboratory part uh, of uh, the uh, skin and the musculoskeletal system. And uh, uh, in this uh, lab uh, session, uh, we will be uh, discussing uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, parasites uh, as well as uh, the uh, bacteria uh, uh, that uh, uh, do infect uh, uh, the uh, musculoskeletal system and how we uh, uh, make a diagnosis uh, in the uh, clinical uh, 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 lab part. So we will uh, start uh, with the uh, uh, bacterial uh, part related to uh, organisms that they infect the skin, how we collect the uh, specimen, and then how we make a diagnosis uh, of these uh, uh, infectious uh, agents. Uh, so we will start with the uh, wound uh, uh, infections. So wound infections uh, and uh, an abscess uh, uh, as well. Uh, it occurs uh, as a uh, complication usually uh, of uh, a trauma uh, or sometimes by uh, surgery uh, where uh, the wound uh, could be uh, infected uh, or uh, uh, a, uh, a disease uh, uh, which uh, uh, may uh, uh, interrupt the uh, skin uh, or uh, mucosal surfaces of the uh, skin. So we will be uh, talking about uh, wounds first and then uh, abscesses and how to collect the specimen and then how uh, uh, we can identify the organisms that are causing uh, these uh, problem. So the uh, wounds, they, uh, 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 there is a different uh, uh, ways uh, by which uh, microorganisms uh, uh, can uh, uh, gain uh, access uh, to a wound. How organisms uh, uh, they can get into a wound. Uh, first, uh, by uh, direct uh, contact and the organisms they will transfer uh, uh, from uh, uh, sometimes uh, equipment that we use uh, in a hospital or in a clinic that are uh, uh, contaminated uh, or for example uh, uh, through uh, uh, sands uh, or uh, for example uh, through uh, any carrier any instrument or anything that uh, we use to carry the patient with uh, where the uh, wound could be uh, contaminated or for example uh, through the air, through uh, what we call airborne uh, 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 here dispersal. Uh, microorganisms uh, 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 here could be uh, deposited uh, uh, from uh, surrounding uh, the air of the uh, patient and then could land into the skin and then into a wound. Or it could be uh, uh, self uh, contamination from the patient himself could contaminate uh, uh, his or her uh, uh, wound. Uh, any physical, uh, for example, uh, 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 migration uh, from a uh, particular uh, skin area uh, or even from the gastrointestinal tract where, you know, uh, um, stool uh, uh, contamination uh, into a wound uh, sometimes could lead to uh, wound infection or sometimes formation of an abscess. So uh, the uh, uh, specimen collection uh, is uh, uh, usually uh, by uh, what we call an uh, uh, aspiration uh, technique and we go into the wound area and then we aspirate uh, the pus that is formed or into the uh, abscess. So. Uh, it is the perfect way then to aspirate a, a wound or an abscess. Uh, 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 it's the uh, perfect way and the uh, uh, mostly used method uh, uh, for uh, a specimen uh, uh, collection uh, uh, from an abscess uh, or a deep wound uh, area. Uh, 
this is the best and the perfect way is to aspirate a specimen from a wound or from an abscess. So of course, so we could be using uh, swabs, but aspiration is the perfect way that we should be using. So then uh, aspiration uh, of a wound or an abscess is the perfect uh, way and the technique. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, we have to uh, 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 disinfect the uh, area uh, by using 70% uh, uh, alcohol. Uh, otherwise, uh, contamination of the specimen could happen. So uh, 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 disinfection here is the first step we do. Second, uh, we could use uh, a local anesthetic uh, because sometimes the procedure uh, could be uh, painful to the patient. Uh, uh, so uh, we could use uh, uh, local uh, uh, anesthesia, uh, any uh, local anesthetic. Uh, xylocaine, for example, the nocaine uh, will be uh, uh, useful. Then uh, we uh, 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 insert uh, of a uh, sterile needle uh, here deeply uh, inside the abscess or deep uh, or the deep wound, and then we aspirate of a, a large amount uh, of uh, the uh, specimen. Uh, and then after that, uh, we uh, evacuated from air uh, here, uh, just evacuated from air. Uh, uh, and then, uh, uh, because it is so important to preserve it uh, uh, for an aerobic uh, environment, where sometimes uh, the microorganisms could be anaerobic, so we have to evacuate it uh, from air. Uh, here uh, uh, and then uh, uh, we uh, uh, put the uh, 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 specimen uh, on the uh, allocated uh, uh, media that uh, we are going to talk about in just a second. Uh, sometimes uh, we, we could use a swab and uh, swabs uh, could be valuable if we could not uh, use a needle. So needle uh, aspiration is uh, the number one technique. Second, uh, is uh, to use a swab. Uh, so the swab method is inferior uh, uh, here to the uh, aspiration uh, uh, specimen because uh, uh, it holds uh, uh, less uh, uh, volume, here very important, and uh, it is more subjected uh, to uh, contamination. So the best way is to use a needle aspiration. Very important to remember that. So the uh, um, swap uh, then the procedure. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we have to uh, disinfect uh, the uh, area uh, using 70% uh, uh, ethyl uh, alcohol. Uh, we could use a local anesthetic, as I said just a second here, uh, uh, using any uh, uh, local uh, anesthetic, lignocaine or xylocaine, uh, and then uh, we could uh, open the abscess with a, a sterile knife, uh, and, and then we uh, uh, drain uh, the pus. The pus will be coming out, and then we insert uh, the uh, sterile uh, uh, cotton uh, swab uh, in the uh, uh, draining um, uh, uh, purulent uh, uh, here material, and the, the pus that will be coming out, uh, and then uh, uh, we insert the uh, uh, swab and then we rotate it uh, 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 inside uh, 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 to get uh, uh, the largest uh, uh, volume uh, of uh, 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 possible uh, uh, here pus that could be coming out of the uh, abscess, uh, uh, and then we place it uh, in uh, uh, its uh, uh, special uh, container after that. And then we clean uh, uh, the area of the uh, wound uh, and then uh, we uh, remove the pus uh, completely after that. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, we could have a, a, a chronic uh, wound uh, versus an acute uh, wound uh, uh, infection. And uh, uh, here, uh, sometimes it's uh, 
very difficult to distinguish uh, uh, between a uh, uh, wound uh, colonization, for example, and infection. Um, sometimes, so uh, uh, it's so important uh, 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 to see I here uh, if the wound has a pus uh, and a fluid that will be coming out versus uh, 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 no pus that is coming out, for example, and the pain as well. If the wound is painful, usually the wound is infected uh, compared if it is not uh, uh, painful. M might might be not infected. So the pain is a very important sign in wound. Uh, it increases uh, the chance that the wound is infected. But uh, absence of pain uh, here uh, uh, does not uh, uh, rule out infection. It's not always the uh, uh, area has to be uh, painful. Very important to remember that. The uh, characteristics of a wound fluid uh, uh, here, uh, whether it's an exudate or, uh, for example, purulent discharge versus clear discharge, it's also important in the differentiation. Uh, we call it, uh, if it is not uh, uh, purulent, uh, we call it serous, uh, for example, f fluid. Uh, uh, if it is infected, usually it's uh, 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 here, a purulent type of uh, fluid, but sometimes um, uh, might not uh, be true all the time. Uh, uh, sometimes might not be uh, helpful uh, in the diagnosis uh, of an infected uh, wound. Uh, after uh, uh, taking uh, the uh, specimen, then we need uh, to uh, uh, transport it and the transportation is extremely important. So we transport uh, the uh, uh, specimen uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to the lab uh, as soon as possible. Uh, you don't have to wait and immediately you take it and then you send it to the lab. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, aspirated uh, uh, specimen Usually, we, we put it uh, into a uh, container to preserve it, uh, uh, and the, uh, uh, this container uh, uh, usually uh, uh, in which uh, it, it has uh, uh, no oxygen because of uh, the uh, we want to preserve the anaerobic uh, environment. This is so important to, to know. So uh, oxygen has to be uh, excluded uh, or sometimes uh, filled with carbon uh, dioxide here. So you have to keep it uh, uh, preserved. Uh, then we have to keep it uh, moist. So because dry specimens, we could lose microorganisms. Uh, uh, here, very important to know. Uh, and usually, uh, we have to take it uh, at uh, uh, room uh, uh, temperature. Uh, if we are using a swab, we uh, swab uh, the uh, specimen. We use uh, cotton uh, swab. Uh, uh, it should be uh, put uh, in the uh, uh, same thing, uh, uh, transport, uh, for example, uh, uh, media. That we use uh, transport carrying uh, media. One of them, for example, called Stewart's uh, uh, media, uh, that we use it to carry uh, the uh, specimen. Uh, and we, we use the carrier media to preserve uh, uh, the specimen uh, from uh, uh, drying and to uh, uh, prevent any overgrowth uh, of. Uh, uh, rapidly uh, growing uh, microorganisms that could give you a false uh, positive uh, results. Uh, we use uh, in the uh, microbiology lab uh, 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 media uh, that is uh, so important uh, uh, here uh, to know about. Uh, so uh, we use uh, uh, blood agar because we want to see if the organisms are uh, uh, beta or alpha hemolytic uh, or not, and so this is the most commonly used 
uh, container that is sheep blood uh, uh, agar. Uh, sometimes we could use chocolate agar uh, for more fastidious uh, organisms like uh, Haemophilus uh, influenza, for example, requires uh, chocolate. Uh, and sometimes you could use McConkey agar, where uh, we uh, need to isolate organisms of the Enterobacteriaceae. So we use uh, McConkey to differentiate those from lactose fermenters versus non-lactose fermenters. And sometimes uh, we could use also other enriched media uh, we call it thioglycolate and so this uh, thioglycolate is so important to preserve uh, the uh, uh, microorganisms that are present uh, in the specimen then after we uh, take the specimen then we have to, to uh, inoculate it uh, on the uh, media and uh, uh, sometimes uh, if uh, the uh, specimen is uh, uh, thick uh, uh, then we could uh, uh, delete it uh, with uh, normal uh, uh, saline for example if it is thick uh, so uh, we have to make it uh, thin uh, here by adding uh, 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 normal uh, uh, saline we emulsify it uh, for example in normal saline or uh, uh, thioglycolate uh, uh, as I said uh, thioglycolate uh, broth uh, to make it a uh, suspension uh, 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 and then uh, we culture it uh, by streaking uh, method and you can see here uh, I'm sure uh, you are so familiar with the streaking and the four quadrant technique start the first and then take it to the second and take the second to the third and then the third to the fourth uh, so you are going to get a well isolated colonies on the fourth uh, quadrant. So the uh, most uh, common uh, organisms uh, that you are going uh, to isolate uh, from a uh, uh, wound uh, culture is uh, uh, Staphylococci. And you know about Staphylococcus aureus and the uh, Staphylococcus uh, epidermidis or coagulase uh, negative staph and coagulase positive staph and uh, uh, here you can see the staphylococcus uh, aureus is usually uh, the one that is more virulent and we can see that this is this one is usually more uh, uh, beta hemolytic uh, when you uh, streak it uh, on the uh, 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 allocated uh, 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 media that we use uh, for the labs like uh, sheep blood agar for example usually uh, they are uh, beta uh, hemolytic and when uh, you do a gram stain usually they are gram positive cocci uh, in uh, clusters but the gram stain uh, uh, does not differentiate between staphylococcus aureus coagulase positive and the coagulase negative uh, staph uh, both they are uh, uh, gram positive cocci in uh, clusters. So uh, the uh, uh, Staphylococcus uh, aureus, as I said, uh, 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 usually uh, this is the most common organism isolated in a wound culture in uh, over 85% uh, uh, of the uh, total uh, uh, number of uh, specimens that uh, 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 we uh, aspirate, aspirate from wounds. And uh, those uh, uh, usually the colonies that uh, we isolate uh, we do uh, three basic uh, biochemical tests first catalase test so uh, usually uh, it's positive for the staff and negative for the uh, strip and then we do the coagulase test and uh, it is uh, coagulase positive uh, for staphylococcus aureus and coagulase negative for the uh, the, uh, the staphylococcus uh, epidermidis for example and also uh, we use what we call the mannitol salt uh, agar uh, where staphylococcus aureus ferments the mannitol sugar uh, compared to uh, the uh, staphylococcus epidermidis usually does not ferment the mannitol uh, sugar and does not uh, grow on the mannitol salt agar so these tests are uh, so simple to perform in the lab 
for example the uh, catalase uh, test uh, we place a uh, uh, we place a a uh, drop of uh, 3% uh, hydrogen uh, uh, peroxide uh, on a, a glass slide and then uh, we uh, uh, select uh, the uh, colony and then we mix it uh, and then uh, we see uh, air bubbles that will come out uh, uh, here from the hydrogen peroxide uh, which indicates uh, oxygen uh, uh, here release and that means that uh, uh, the uh, organism has a the catalase enzyme that converts hydrogen peroxide into water and uh, oxygen. So the uh, colonies uh, that you uh, expect uh, that they are uh, staphylococci usually are uh, 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 catalase uh, positive. So uh, uh, the uh, Staphylococcus aureus and the uh, Staphylococcus epidermidis both they are catalase uh, positive and the uh, air bubbles that they come out those are uh, uh, oxygen. If there is no bubbles uh, that means uh, it's uh, uh, catalase negative, as simple as that. Um, the uh, coagulase test, uh, this is the one that we, we use to differentiate uh, a Staphylococcus uh, aureus uh, from other Staphylococcus aureus is uh, coagulase positive, and the uh, coagulase negative, like epidermidis, uh, usually does not have uh, 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 the uh, coagulase enzyme. Uh, so, the coagulase enzyme uh, 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 converts usually uh, fibrinogen uh, into uh, fibrin and uh, uh, this uh, enzyme is used by bacteria uh, uh, to be so evasive. This is extremely important to know. Uh, so, the pathogenic uh, uh, staphylococcal uh, strains, usually they coat uh, uh, themselves uh, with this uh, uh, enzyme uh, so uh, when fibrin I I is formed uh, usually th the bacteria uses it uh, to evade uh, our immune uh, system uh, so the fibrin that's used usually uh, like isolate the organism from the rest of uh, the immune system so uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the test uh, uh, it, it is so simple, uh, the coagulase test, you get a test tube uh, just of uh, fresh uh, plasma and then you put the colonies uh, in them. Uh, uh, if uh, they contain the coagulase enzyme, they change uh, the fibrinogen into fibrin and then they will form uh, a fibrin clot. So the formation of fibrin clot uh, is coagulase positive. No fibrin clot is usually uh, coagulase negative. So the uh, coagulase positive and the coagulase negative staff usually they can grow on uh, sheep uh, blood agar. Uh, usually the coagulase positive staff uh, are uh, uh, beta hemolytic. Uh, but when you do uh, uh, the gram stain, uh, both they will appear the same. Uh, 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 usually they are uh, gram positive uh, cocci that are arranged in clusters like a bunch of uh, grapes. So uh, um, another method we use to differentiate uh, between uh, coagulase positive and coagulase negative staff is uh, the uh, fermentation of uh, mannitol salt. And so we will see if the organism can grow on uh, mannitol salt uh, agar and ferments the mannitol sugar uh, or not. So the way we do that, we, we just uh, uh, streak uh, the plate on the uh, mannitol uh, salt uh, agar, inoculated at uh, 18 to uh, 24 uh, hours at uh, 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 37 degrees centigrade and the uh, 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 mannitol uh, usually uh, if it is aureus uh, will be uh, fermented uh, producing an acid and changes the pH uh, indicator which is the uh, phenol red from red uh, into yellow 
So if it is yellow, that means that the mannitol uh, sugar has been uh, uh, fermented. The no change, usually it's mannitol, not fermented. So uh, uh, both they will grow on the mannitol salt agar, but uh, 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 the uh, uh, the uh, aureus is the only one uh, that ferments the uh, mannitol uh, uh, sugar, uh, uh, changing the uh, color uh, from uh, uh, red into uh, uh, yellow. While uh, the uh, coagulase is uh, negative staff, usually this one is uh, uh, less uh, virulent, although they share the same uh, morphology, gram-positive uh, cocci in uh, clusters. And uh, usually the colonies uh, on uh, uh, sheep blood agar, they are more uh, whitish in color. So that's why we used to call them uh, Staphylococcus albus uh, in the uh, past. Now we call them uh, uh, epidermidis. Uh, so white uh, uh, colonies, when, when you do gram stain, uh, they are gram-positive cocci and uh, clusters. So uh, um, uh, we could differentiate between the uh, coagulase, uh, uh, members of the uh, coagulase negative staph, like uh, Staphylococcus uh, epidermidis and the others, uh, 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 by using uh, the drug Novobiosin, uh, uh, for example. Uh, so Staphylococcus uh, epidermidis, for example, uh, is usually uh, sensitive uh, to Novobiosin, uh, uh, while, for example, uh, Saprophyticus uh, is uh, uh, resistant to uh, 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 Novobiosin. So you could use that uh, for uh, the differentiation between the uh, two strains. While uh, uh, the uh, uh, streptococci, when you do uh, uh, gram stain, you see gram positive uh, cocci in chains. Uh, uh, and then uh, we could do uh, other tests to differentiate members uh, of the uh, streptococci, whether it's a group A, group B, group C, by uh, different uh, uh, grouping techniques. But the gram stain morphology, they look the same. Gram positive cocci in a uh, uh, chain rather than cluster, and usually they are catalase uh, uh, negative. And um, uh, when uh, you put that on sheep blood agar, uh, you could see uh, that uh, group A beta hemolytic strip, for example, or streptococcus uh, uh, pyogenes, uh, they are uh, uh, beta uh, uh, hemolytic. Uh, compared to others, and we use that for uh, differentiation. Uh, so we have to use that on uh, sheep blood agar. So uh, Streptococcus uh, uh, pyogenes, then another name for it is uh, group A beta hemolytic strip. And when you streak it, as you can see, on uh, sheep blood agar, you can see a complete uh, 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 zone uh, of uh, inhibition of red blood cells or lysis of red blood cells, complete lysis uh, here on the sheep blood uh, agar. So this is a uh, very important uh, first step in the identification uh, of uh, uh, streptococcus pyogenes. Then we do the susceptibility to the disc, we call it uh, bacitracin. Uh, if it is sensitive, uh, then we call it a group A beta hemolytic uh, strep. But both, all of them, they are gram-positive uh, uh, cocci in chains. They are usually catalase uh, negative, as we uh, said. And um, on sheep blood agar, as I said, uh, 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 the group A beta hemolytic strip shows a complete hemolysis of red blood cells. They usually form uh, pinpoint uh, colonies, uh, uh, white to gray in color, uh, surrounded by uh, the uh, beta hemolysis. And uh, usually the hemolysis uh, is in, uh, enhanced 
uh, usually uh, around uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, stepping uh, site. So where you will step uh, the uh, agar, you can see that the hemolysis is uh, enhanced. And uh, very important uh, uh, here when you uh, do the susceptibility uh, uh, with the bacitracin uh, disc, usually it is sensitive. And uh, this is pathognomonic for group A beta hemolytic uh, strip. So it's extremely important to know that group A beta hemolytic strip it is beta hemolytic uh, here why other groups like uh, group B group C and so on uh, sometimes might not be uh, beta hemolytic like streptococcus uh, uh, agalactia for example uh, uh, compared to group A beta hemolytic uh, strip and of course we differentiate those uh, by antigen extraction and then doing the grouping technique. So when you see colonies uh, that are gram-positive cocci in chain and they are beta hemolytic, uh, sometimes might not be group A, so you have to do a grouping. And when you do the uh, bacitracin susceptibility, as I said, it is uh, uh, group A. Uh, if it is not, then we have to do the antigen extraction and uh, then the identification technique. So group A beta hemolytic strep is uh, after uh, Staphylococcus aureus is a very common organism causing uh, skin infection, uh, like uh, for example uh, the uh, uh, erysipelas uh, uh, and many other uh, uh, infections as we are going to see in just a second. So. Uh, not every beta hemolytic uh, colonies that are catalase uh, negative uh, is group A beta hemolytic strip. So you have to identify it by the bacitracin or the antigen extraction technique. In skin infections, as uh, always, uh, we say that uh, a, the uh, uh, wound could be contaminated with uh, a gram negative uh, bacilli. Uh, like the coliforms of uh, the enterobacteria see that they come uh, from uh, uh, stools. Uh, so usually uh, those they are oxidase negative after they are gram negative uh, uh, rods and then we identify those uh, with uh, uh, biochemical test. Uh, but all members of the enterobacteria see are gram negative rods and they are oxidase negative. Also, uh, uh, among uh, those uh, gram-negative bacteria that uh, could be isolated from the uh, skin, usually uh, is uh, uh, Pseudomonas uh, species. And the Pseudomonas, very common one is Pseudomonas aeruginosa, that has uh, a very nice citrus uh, uh, color, citrus smell, uh, and uh, 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 here uh, light uh, blue to green type of uh, a pigment that is produced and very nice uh, smell. So we call that uh, uh, pyocyanin or pyoverdin, uh, citrus type of uh, smell. Uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, 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 also a common organism that we isolate that is causing uh, infection to the skin. We always remember Pseudomonas aeruginosa with its uh, fruity uh, smell uh, and the uh, 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 nice pigment that they produce uh, uh, here, uh, uh, bluish to greenish in discoloration and fruity smell. Pseudomonas aeruginosa that are oxidase positive. So it's so simple uh, uh, here to test this organism uh, for the uh, presence of the oxidase uh, 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 enzyme. So we put uh, on a filter paper disc, what we call the uh, oxidase reagent. And then you smash the colony uh, on the uh, filter paper disc that is uh, 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 here, uh, uh, just uh, rich with uh, 
uh, the oxidase reagent so immediately within seconds uh, uh, you can see uh, deep bluish uh, uh, deep blue uh, color will appear on the filter paper indicating that it is oxidase uh, positive other organism that's so important uh, that we isolate from the skin is a gram positive rod that is a uh, 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 spore uh, former which is the clostridium like the clostridium uh, perfringens and, and those they do have uh, a spore that could be uh, terminal or subterminal uh, or sometimes central uh, in the uh, differentiation and when you do the gram stain at the site where the uh, spore is located y you don't see that it, so it looks like uh, an air bubble uh, when you look at it under the uh, uh, microscope Clostridium remember Clostridium perfringes Clostridium tetani and uh, 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 many other uh, Clostridium uh, uh, species um, Uh, the uh, uh, Clostridium perfringens uh, produces a gas we, and, and, and uh, in the, the tissue, uh, so it forms what we call crepitus. Uh, we will uh, see that in, in, in just a second. And Clostridium tetani is, is, is usually uh, the spores are at the terminal end, so they will look like uh, uh, a racket. Uh, 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 ball or drumstick uh, uh, in uh, appearance. So remember the clostridium, clostridium perfringens, gas gangrene, clostridium tetani, tetanus, and clost clostridium uh, 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 species, perfringens, tetani, and um, uh, uh, many other uh, 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 clostridium. We, by the way, perfringens could be associated with food. Uh, poisoning as well and those are strict and aerobic gram positive bacilli so you can see uh, uh, then that uh, the morphology of those uh, uh, could be uh, different it depends on the location uh, of the uh, spores tetani for example they are terminal that they will look like a drumstick in appearance but all they are gram positive uh, uh, bacilli uh, and so the location of the spore sometimes is different from one species to the other they are gram positive bacilli those uh, 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 organisms it is so important uh, uh, to uh, grow them in a strict uh, uh, anaerobic uh, 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 environment. Uh, so uh, the agar uh, then it has to be cultured in an anaerobic uh, uh, environment uh, by uh, uh, taking the oxygen out of the air, replace it with carbon dioxide, uh, for example, and uh, nitrogen. So, or some times nowadays we, we can use what we call the anaerobic chamber uh, where the oxygen is uh, taken out from that chapter replaced with carbon dioxide and nitrogen some of the uh, um, uh, protozoa uh, uh, that also they can uh, infect the skin uh, like for example the leishmania and you know the uh, 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 common uh, Leishmania that affects the skin, we call it Leishmania uh, tropica. Leishmania tropica, the disease we call it Leishmaniasis, for example. Uh, they are uh, 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 usually are uh, obligate uh, intracellular parasites, they survive uh, in inside the uh, cells and uh, they can uh, uh, cause many clinical uh, conditions and those they are transmitted uh, to humans by the bite of the phlebotomous fly phlebotomous fly or the phlebotomine uh, uh, fly um, so if you control uh, uh, those uh, flies then the disease can be controlled uh, uh, completely 
uh, uh, usually those are uh, 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 this disease is located where the phlebotomous fly uh, is usually uh, present and in our part of the world those flies are present uh, in uh, near the uh, Dead Sea so some many people living near the Dead Sea uh, can be infected with the Leishmania uh, protozoa So uh, the uh, uh, life cycle of uh, uh, Leishmania uh, uh, then uh, uh, they alternate between uh, uh, humans uh, and uh, the uh, 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 mosquitoes. So it's really in interesting that uh, 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 here uh, 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 those, uh, 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 as you can see, uh, the, uh, uh, the stage that is uh, uh, a present uh, we within uh, the cell, we we call them the A must to go to form, or the Leishman uh, uh, Donovan uh, uh, bodies uh, that uh, the uh, uh, mosquito or the sand fly they come and uh, take the A, A must to go to form and change that into Pro must to go to form, uh, for example, uh, and so on. Uh, so you can see. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, life cycle is so important uh, if you can control uh, uh, the uh, sand fly you can con contain or control the uh, Leishmanias so uh, the uh, sand fly uh, uh, then uh, they uh, 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 ingest uh, the uh, those and uh, they go into the aim has to go into the uh, 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 macrophages, uh, the ones that we call Nishman uh, Donovan uh, bodies, and then they will change uh, in the uh, 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 macrophages, for example, uh, into many uh, aim has to go to Nishman uh, Donovan uh, bodies. They multiply usually by binary fission uh, within the uh, uh, macrophages, as you can see. Then those they will rupture the macrophages and so on, and then they will infect other uh, uh, cells as well. Um, so they can infect so many uh, other uh, uh, cells, and then the patient usually uh, show a positive skin test. Uh, we, can, we call it a Leishmanian uh, uh, test that is usually cell mediated and, and it ends up with uh, an indurated uh, uh, area. So we make uh, the uh, uh, diagnosis of the cutaneous uh, uh, Leishmaniasis uh, uh, by usually uh, from the lesion we make a smear and then we stain it with uh, uh, Gimza stain and then we see the Leishman uh, uh, Donovan bodies or the amas to go uh, forms within the uh, cell. You can take a biopsy as well, uh, and then we can you can show the Leishman Donovan uh, bodies, or you can culture it with what we call NNN uh, agar or or uh, uh, media, uh, and. Um, uh, uh, we can see when you culture the A mastogot form, it will change into uh, uh, what we call the pro mastogot form, uh, uh, where the flagella is usually uh, terminal. So, either by culture or nowadays, of course, we can do uh, a skin testing. So, uh, uh, here the uh, uh, life cycle, then usually in the tissues, it's the uh, uh, aim has to go to uh, uh, form, especially within the uh, macrophages, um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, within uh, the uh, 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 sand fly, uh, uh, you could see uh, uh, the uh, pro has to go to, uh, uh, form, pro has to go to form, uh, and then they will go into the tissue to change into the A has to go to, uh, form. So pro must to go to form, A must to go to form. Uh, uh, so the A must to go to form usually are 
present within the macrophages that we could see. So we call them the Richman uh, uh, Donovan bodies that are taken by uh, uh, the uh, uh, sand fly. So uh, those uh, then the ones uh, that you can stain uh, uh, here and see them within macrophages. The Lishman Donovan bodies are the A mastogot uh, form. So um, uh, the uh, uh, culture of uh, uh, Lishmania is on the N N N medium. Uh, uh, and uh, th those, uh, uh, the ones that they call uh, the uh, Neil uh, Nicol uh, media, uh, and uh, uh, usually used uh, to grow these uh, uh, dishmanias uh, 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 when uh, the uh, amas to go to uh, form. Uh, are usually uh, uh, not found by uh, 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 the uh, scraping. I mean, just when you scrape the uh, skin, uh, and uh, then uh, uh, the uh, uh, trypanosoma uh, 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 cruzii, for example, uh, uh, cannot be seen. Uh, so the uh, agar then uh, we could use agar uh, slant for example you overlay it uh, with uh, uh, here uh, defibrinated uh, uh, rabbit uh, blood uh, to show uh, these uh, ams to goat forms so uh, uh, this is uh <coughs> the uh, pro master goat uh, form uh, that you are going to see uh, uh, following uh, uh, culture uh, of uh, this uh, organism uh, on uh, NN uh, uh, agar. <coughs> um, the uh, other uh, parasites uh, that they do uh, infect the skin and they require arthropods uh, here for transmission uh, are the uh, filarial uh, worms and the filarial, filarial worms uh, they are round uh, uh, worms uh, in, in general uh, usually the uh, uh, adult uh, filarial uh, worm uh, can get up to uh, uh, 120 centimeters in length and over one meter from 2 to 1.2 meters uh, in length and it depends where those are going to be uh, uh, located and their width uh, is around uh, 4 to 10 uh, micrometers uh, their uh, width so they live uh, in our body cavities uh, as well as in the uh, lymphatics so they, they could uh, block the lymphatics a uh, patient could have uh, enlarged uh, uh, organs as well as some uh, they could uh, uh, survive in the uh, subcutaneous uh, tissues uh, as well so in the lymphatics or in the subcutaneous tissues uh, it depends on the type that we are dealing with the uh, embryos uh, that they come out of these uh, filarial worms we call them uh, microfilaria and those are the ones that we use uh, for um, uh, identification uh, purposes and those uh, microfilarials uh, usually they can be up uh, to 350 micrometers in length from 150 to uh, 350 uh, microns uh, in length and usually uh, those uh, they go into the uh, blood uh, or uh, uh, even the uh, dermis so you can see those uh, microfilarials in a blood film or uh, just uh, underneath the skin in the dermis and all uh, uh, of course uh, they require an arthropod uh, uh, vector uh, for uh, uh, transmission so uh, uh, those uh, filarial worms uh, like for example the uh, Vucheria bancroftii 
and their habitat is usually uh, in the uh, lymphatic uh, system. Uh, so uh, we, we call them uh, uh, lymphatic uh, uh, filarias. And uh, usually uh, uh, the uh, uh, intermediate host uh, are the uh, mosquitoes, so the arthropod that transmits uh, these uh, 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 filarial worms, which are area bancroftii, uh, are the uh, mosquitoes. And uh, uh, the other one here, uh, which also infects the skin, here uh, w we call that uh, Oncocerca uh, uh, volvulus, and uh, 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 this one uh, uh, can cause a, a disease, we call it uh, uh, river blindness, where our body responds into that and could lead uh, to uh, blindness. And the uh, uh, arthropod vector that transmits that is the uh, uh, black fly, we call it the simulium uh, black fly. Uh, this is really important to know for each one and, and which arthropod transmits that, because if you can control, if you want to control the disease, you have to control uh, uh, these uh, uh, flies. And the last one here we call it loa loa uh, and uh, uh, this one uh, usually uh, in infects the eye so uh, it's an eye worm and this one is transmitted by uh, uh, the deer fly, we call it chrysops or the uh, deer fly. So uh, these uh, uh, filarial uh, worms then um, can be uh, identified by uh, the uh, microfilaria uh, that they uh, produce. So in uh, Vucereria bancroftii, for example, uh, uh, microfilaria, uh, usually they are uh, in sheath. Uh, so you can see the sheath that covers uh, uh, all of the uh, microfilaria. And you can see uh, as well uh, what we call the uh, uh, gonads uh, that uh, uh, here uh, fills most of the uh, body uh, part. And uh, you can see uh, that they are uh, over 300 micrometers uh, uh, in length. And so those uh, microfilarias usually uh, you uh, take them from the uh, blood or through the lymphatics where they are produced and we use them uh, for uh, identification purposes of these uh, uh, filarial worms. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, life uh, cycle uh, of uh, uh, the uh, uh, Oncocerca volvulus uh, that is usually uh, transmitted uh, by the uh, uh, black fly that we call it the simulium uh, black uh, fly. So the uh, uh, black fly usually uh, takes uh, a blood meal and so uh, it, it is going to take uh, the uh, microfilaria. Um, so those usually uh, are present in the uh, subcutaneous uh, tissues. So they can take the uh, microfilaria uh, uh, here, ones that uh, they represent the uh, males and uh, the uh, females at the same time. Of course, uh, from the uh, subcutaneous uh, uh, nodules uh, in our body. This is where those are uh, located. Uh, the uh, adults, uh, uh, they produce, um, uh, they call it uh, the uh, unheaded uh, uh, microfilaria uh, uh, that uh, uh, here uh, typically uh, are uh, found in the skin. So this is where we uh, we find the microfilaria and the lymphatics as well and um, uh, the connective tissues uh, as well in, in our body uh, but also uh, occasionally um, uh, uh, we can see those uh, in the uh, peripheral uh, blood sometimes rarely uh, in the urine and sometimes in the uh, sputum. So most of our body fluids, uh, you can see these uh, uh, microfilarias. So the uh, black fly takes uh, then a, a blood uh, uh, meal, so they take uh, the uh, microfilarial in them. And so uh, then the microfilaria 
penetrates uh, the uh, black fly med gut and um, here uh, uh, migrate uh, to the uh, thoracic uh, muscles uh, of the uh, uh, black fly and over there uh, uh, they will uh, uh, molt and divide into uh, 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 different uh, larval uh, stages, we call them L1, L2 uh, and so on and, and, and so uh, uh, they will uh, uh, increase uh, uh, in size as you can see and then uh, they will uh, 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 migrate uh, to uh, the head and uh, uh, the uh, 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 and as well as uh, the black fly uh, proboscis in uh, uh, the of the uh, black fly and uh, from there uh, the uh, uh, the black fly uh, uh, here uh, uh, genus uh, is the one responsible for the uh, transmission uh, when it takes uh, uh, here a blood meal uh, that uh, contains the uh, microfilaria. So the uh, uh, and those then uh, are the ones uh, uh, that the uh, black fly simulium it takes the microfilaria and then the microfilaria uh, uh, here will enlarge into males and females and, that and those they molt and uh, they uh, uh, here uh, 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 they mate and, uh, and then uh, and so on the life cycle will uh, keep going on so I want you to remember that uh, the uh, diagnostic uh, uh, stage of all of these uh, uh, filarial worms are the microfilaria and uh, where those uh, usually are located uh, in our body in the blood or in the uh, lymphatic vessels. So this uh, uh, slide will show the uh, simulium black fly, we call it simulium uh, gemnosum, uh, here a, a black fly and uh, this is the one that's responsible for the transmission of uh, Oncocerca uh, uh, vulvalis. So you have to remember each uh, uh, filarial worm and uh, how those uh, are transmitted uh, so you can control uh, the, uh, these filarial worms by controlling, for example, here the flies, uh, the simulium flies, so you can control the Oncocerciasis. So here, uh, in, in this uh, Oncocerca vulva, sometimes you could take a, a skin uh, snip, uh, for example, and uh, uh, you can see the uh, microfilaria uh, even in the uh, skin. And uh, from there, uh, you can make uh, the diagnosis of uh, this uh, worm. So uh, <coughs> the um, uh, life cycle uh, is the same thing uh, here between uh, uh, humans and the uh, chrysops or the uh, deer fly. Uh, so the uh, fly uh, uh, here, uh, chrysops, uh, uh, takes uh, a uh, blood uh, meal. Uh, and uh, uh, as you can see here, the, uh, they will take uh, the blood meal that uh, contains the uh, microfilaria, uh, and those they will develop into the uh, 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 males and uh, females, uh, uh, usually in the uh, uh, subcutaneous uh, tissues uh, in our body. Uh, and then uh, uh, the uh, adults, uh, they uh, produce uh, uh, sheath, so those are sheath uh, compared to Oncocerca volvulus that doesn't have a, a sheath, for example, uh, 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 around uh, the, uh, uh, you can see that in the spinal uh, fluid or sometimes in the uh, uh, urine and sometimes in the sputum, in, in, in many of our uh, body uh, uh, fluids. Um, uh, they go into the peripheral uh, blood. Uh, and uh, even in the uh, uh, lungs. 
and uh, uh, over there uh, the uh, fly uh, uh, takes uh, the uh, 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 blood uh, meal and those uh, as you can see they uh, uh, grow in the fly to continue uh, with the uh, life cycle uh, so the uh, microfilaria uh, here uh, shed uh, the uh, uh, sheath uh, uh, here uh, I think they uh, uh, penetrates uh, uh, here the uh, med gut uh, and um, uh, then they will uh, migrate to the uh, thoracic uh, uh, muscles of the uh, fly and then uh, these uh, 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 larvae will uh, start to develop uh, uh, into many different stages L1, L2 uh, and so on and they uh, uh, grow till they form the uh, adult uh, uh, worms uh, males and females and, and then they will copulate uh, uh, to, to produce the microfilaria and the life cycle will go on so uh, uh, they, uh, uh, those, uh, they, they will uh, migrate to the head uh, and um, uh, uh, into the uh, fly proboscis, the microfilaria, uh, and then uh, uh, from there uh, the life cycle will go on. Uh, the uh, fly uh, genus continue that uh, and uh, in, in, in injects the microfilaria uh, here into the patient uh, and so on. Uh, the life cycle will keep uh, going on uh, till they go into the uh, skin subcutaneous tissue uh, and here sometimes uh, they could go into the uh, of course into the eyes the sclera and you can see those sometimes worms uh, underneath the uh, uh, sclera and you can take those out from the eyes lower lower yeah, this is the uh, intermediate host, which is the uh, chrysops or the uh, deer fly. Uh, the uh, lowers uh, uh, the uh, uh, lower uh, uh, lower vector. Uh, remember that the deer fly we call that. Um, so uh, we, uh, uh, then we uh, make uh, the uh, diagnosis of uh, lower lower uh, by uh, uh, here uh, uh, looking into the uh, microfilaria and then uh, follow up uh, the uh, gonads and usually at the end of the microfilaria you can see one or two uh, uh, here gonads uh, that will end up to the end of the uh, microfilaria uh, and this is almost uh, pathognomonic of uh, lower lower. We have other uh, uh, worms or other nematodes uh, that they, uh, uh, they habitat is usually the uh, skin uh, like for example the uh, uh, Trichinella spiralis we talked about that uh, before and this one usually in insists in uh, uh, here uh, coil uh, uh, inside uh, a uh, lemon uh, shape uh, cyst within the muscles so this is inside the muscles rather than the skin uh, in uh, uh, pressed uh, uh, muscle uh, tissue and when you take uh, a biopsy as we said before uh, you can see the uh, muscle fibers and the uh, uh, insistent or coiled uh, uh, worm within the uh, uh, muscle uh, fiber we have another one, much longer worm that exceeds one meter in, in length. Uh, we call that uh, Drachanculus uh, uh, medinensis, um, uh, or the uh, uh, Guinea worm. Uh, and uh, uh, this one uh, is usually transmitted uh, here to humans uh, 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 through the water fleas. So the water fleas uh, contains the intermediate uh, uh, stage uh, here. So uh, uh, if uh, uh, people they drink the water that contains uh, 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 here the in infectious stage of uh, uh, Drachanculus uh, uh, medanensis, then they will uh, go through 
uh, the uh, uh, blood and then into the lymphatics and then into the skin and, and can uh, get up to uh, more than uh, uh, one uh, meter in length and you have to take that out uh, underneath the uh, skin. Uh, so uh, uh, usually uh, uh, when this uh, worm uh, uh, tries uh, to uh, uh, produce the uh, microfilaria or uh, the uh, larva, uh, they come very closer to the skin and then uh, they will make like a, a vesicle and then an ulcer into the uh, skin. So usually uh, we have to go there and then uh, then get a, a wood uh, applicator and uh, roll the worm uh, over that wood applicator. Uh, every day uh, you can roll out one or two uh, centimeters no more because if that is uh, uh, here uh, ruptures or uh, broken, then you, it could uh, cause a severe uh, inflammatory reaction uh, to the skin. So the Dracanculus medinensis, uh, this is a very common worm. Uh, sometimes you could see it uh, in uh, uh, certain parts of uh, Africa, in Yemen uh, as well. And uh, is usually, uh, as I said, uh, uh, transmitted uh, here by accidentally uh, uh, drinking the uh, cyclops or the water uh, flea. Uh, these are uh, some of the uh, slides that uh, show some of the viral infections uh, to the uh, skin, uh, like uh, the human papilloma virus, the one that is uh, responsible for the for formation of the uh, skin uh, uh, words, uh, and this one uh, is uh, these are uh, uh, oncoviruses, um, uh, as you, you know, and um, uh, just uh, this is slide just to remind you that human papilloma uh, virus is an oncovirus, and uh, you can see the uh, uh, wor the uh, uh, words uh, uh, here on the uh, skin caused by these viruses. Also, uh, uh, the uh, herpes zoster uh, uh, viruses, uh, the uh, ones uh, that we have uh, talked about uh, and uh, how this is uh, usually uh, uh, covers a certain uh, dermatome. dermatome. Uh, so it depends on the area where the uh, ganglia uh, uh, where the virus is present and then it will go to that particular uh, area that is uh, covered by this uh, dermatome um, and uh, from a, a, a vesicle for example of the skin into the severe inflammatory reaction of the skin that covers uh, the uh, uh, dermatome herpes uh, zoster usually it's uh, associated with severe pain and like a burning sensation into the skin, uh, uh, the area that is covered by uh, that uh, dermatone and covered uh, by that particular uh, nerve ganglia. And uh, this is slide just to remind you that the uh, skin also uh, can be uh, infected with uh, fungi, uh, the, uh, 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 the uh, tinnies that could affect uh, uh, the epidermidis as well as the hair uh, as well as the uh, uh, nail. It depends uh, on uh, which area in our body that is infected and uh, we can uh, call that uh, tinea pedis for example, tinea corporis for the body, tinea angium uh, for the uh, uh, nail uh, and so on and then you have to do a skin scrapping to uh, to identify uh, here uh, that uh, particular type of uh, a uh, fungus. Uh, so, uh <coughs> so remember these uh, uh, fungi uh, are uh, uh, diagnosed by the skin scrapping and uh, the uh, uh, type of the uh, microconidia uh, that you are going to scrap out of the nail or the skin uh, or the hair uh, or whatever uh, and then uh, uh, you are going to prescribe the uh, antifungal uh, treatment uh, for uh, those. So I want you to remember that 
uh, the uh, uh, these uh, uh, fungi uh, usually uh, are uh, uh, diagnosed uh, based uh, on the uh, microconidia that are produced uh, uh, by those so you have uh, to remember uh, the uh, uh, the different uh, species uh, uh, that are associated with these uh, uh, types of uh, uh, in infections so that you have to remember the three different uh, species associated with those uh, microsporum uh, for example a uh, trichophyton like trichophyton um, integrophytes and epidermophyton uh, and uh, from the shape of the microconidia uh, you can make uh, the uh, diagnosis